All right, we're in the midst of making some rollers. Here's a long one, and then we've got a short one in the Okuma and a short one in the Ridgeback. And they're hollow. They got plugs welded in the ends of them, so we faced them off and drilled a hole in there. And likewise, we're about to do the same thing there and then bore it out to accept a bronze bushing. And this brings me to the point of the video, which is setting up that object in the steady rest concentric to the tailstock spindle in such a manner and method that would work regardless of the length of the material, the weight, and all things. And the simplest is generally to put an indicator on them, on the part that is, and then sweep and indicate to the tailstock spindle. There's a whole bunch of other ways of doing it and they're all good and they all work and if it works for you that's awesome but if the part weighs five tons you're not going to be able to do some of them so and of course if the part is non-magnetic you're not going to be able to attach your magnetic indicator base directly to the component you'll have to use some sort of clamp arrangement which we'll talk about later but the purpose of this video is how we can use the coaxial video um, indicator, the same one that we would use in the milling machine, in this circumstance. So I've got an old magnetic indicator base here and I took the stud off it and what remains is a brass pin that is I believe M8 by 1.25 millimeters and we've made a little brass adapter that goes M8 125 to in my case I believe it's 10 millimeters to accept that coaxial indicator and I was going to put a set screw crossways through the 10 millimeter side but it turns out that uh, for right now while it's in still good shape uh, that set screw is not even required so so just ignore that hole there the fact that it's there doesn't matter um, but nine times out of ten of course it won't be there so what we do is we take our magnetic base and we attach it to the part like so get over those nubs there so that it's uh, sitting kind of flat and it doesn't actually matter where this is on the part then we take our coaxial indicator with the probe already attached in this case doesn't matter what order you put that on there and just like uncle harry would say about uh, the birds and the bees that part goes in that part there and because it's a pretty good fit and perhaps slightly tapered it doesn't even need a lock screw it just sets in there and that's fine and then we're going to bring the tailstock spindle in and get this to ride on the outside of that spindle so there we have the magnetic base attached to the part the coaxial indicator stuck in the bronze adapter on the magnetic base we have the probe or arm running against the outside of the tailstock spindle and then we've got the reaction bar running against the tool post. Now, ordinarily you, you do not have to install the reaction bar you would just hold the indicator so as to be able to read it and it doesn't matter where the magnet is placed as long as it's somewhat near the center and perhaps not even that. The motion that's indicated on the coaxial is purely how much this moves which is dependent on how much this is out of true with this spindle here so you'll see the magnet or the bronze adapter on the magnet it weevil wobbles quite a bit and I've specifically forced this part out of center slightly so that we actually get a reading on that gauge and now if we watch the gauge as we go around just as normal it's indicating a high and a low so we would then stop at one point take a reading stop at another point take a reading and then try to push the part halfway across that and rinse and repeat just like we would on say the milling machine if we were using a coaxial indicator or if we had a, a regular dial indicator attached 
reading out here, but you know, using our mirror to get the values from the bottom. So here we can do it all nice and civilized. And we'll do some quick tweaking of these adjustment screws off camera, and then we'll show it running true. Hopefully you'll take my word for it that there's no parlor tricks involved. And I strongly encourage you to go and try this method in uh, your own shop. So there we've zeroed up the part in the steady rest using that dial there. We'll demonstrate that this is still in somewhat of an orbit. However, when we look at the indicator face, there's no relative motion or deflection appreciably of that probe against the tailstock spindle. So that gets us to a point where this is concentric with this. So we put our center drill in there and form our center drill feature in the part and then put a live center in and the world is your oyster from there. Hope you like it.